Hello everyone, welcome back to another Starships 2.0 tutorial. This video will be the last video in the ship creation tutorials, apart from build videos. This video will be covering the build process. I'll cover the order that the book goes through, and then I'll be going over the order I use in the shipyard sheet. So let's start with the book's order. First, the book has you starting with a stock tier 0 ship. It has you figure out your ship's tier, and then its hull points and shield points. Next, you figure out your ship's ability scores. You can use the standard array or 27 point by. I personally recommend using point by. After ability scores comes modifications, in which you install all of the modifications you think the ship will have. After modifications, you choose your ship's equipment. Armor, reactors, and power couplings come stock. Everything else has to be paid for. This is where you figure out your ship's armor class and damage reduction and pick out weapons. And that's it for the book's order. There's a bit of backtracking that you would need to do if you were doing this all on paper, but the Starship sheet takes care of most of the busy work. Now let's go over how I build ships in the Starship sheet. I do things slightly out of order compared to the book, but in general I go clockwise around the sheet. Right off the bat I will say that I typically write out my ship's modifications last. The reason for this is I usually build capital ships, which are huge ships more often than not, and they have a lot of modifications to write out, but I can get a ship into a quote-unquote usable state without listing out its modifications. Once I know what ship I want to make, the first thing I do is figure out its size and tier, and what kind of armor or shields it has, and write down its saving throw proficiencies. Next I pick out a tier 0 role for it, and tier 2 and tier 4 features if need be, and then I start playing around with ability scores. I assign my ability score increase points from my ship's tier, if applicable, and I also add in ability score increases from modifications. The most you can ever put into the modification cell for a particular ability score is 7, but usually you'll only need a few points here and there. When I'm happy with the ability scores, I pick out a reactor and a power coupling, and then I'll start feeding numbers into the capacities cluster to make sure my ship has enough crew housing, docking bay space, and mechanic shop space to house the ship's crew, fighter complement, and ground vehicle complement, assuming it has any of these. You won't need to worry about crew capacity on mu much on small ships, unless you're making a two or three seater like the ARC-170 or a shuttle, but you will need to worry about it from size medium and above. Next I pick out weapons. I figure out how many and what kind of weapons the ship has and figure out their facings. Next, I carry over the weapons I've selected and other equipment and fill out the equipment section. If the ship has a space or ground complement, I'll start listing things in the cluster below the equipment cluster. Then we get to modifications. I fill in the role specialization or role mastery modifications from the tier 2 and 4 features if I need to, and then start listing out the mods going in order from engineering mods to weapons mods. I make sure that the mods that are needed for the capacities cluster and the mo modifications ability score increase cells are present and fill in the skill proficiency cells along the way. I also make sure that I have enough fixed hardpoints installed for the weapons I chose earlier. And that's about all there is to it. I hope you found this entire series to be helpful and informative and I hope you consider watching the build videos where I'll be going through the process of building five iconic Star Wars ships. See you on the next one.